going to talk about evaluating trig functions. We're going to focus on sine and cosine using our unit circle. Now, y'all don't know what the unit circle is yet, but you're getting ready to. So the reason why it's called the unit circle is because it has a radius of 1. Okay, it has a radius of 1. Uh, so that's why it's called the unit circle. So the first things that we're going to fill out here, we've got a circle here that's centered at the origin and it has a radius of 1. So it's very easy for us to label the points on the positive x-axis, the positive y-axis, the negative x-axis, and the negative y-axis. So just ignoring the fact that this is a circle, what would be the coordinates, the x and y coordinates of this point right here on the positive x-axis? 1, 0. The x-coordinate is 1. The y-coordinate is 0 because we're on the x-axis. We haven't gone up or down any, but we've gone out one unit because of that radius of 1. Now, this is a way for us to reference angles, so we need to recognize what angle this is. So in degrees, it's either 0 degrees because we haven't gone anywhere, or we've gone all the way around the circle, so it's 360 degrees. Or we also need to be familiar with the radians, so it's 0 radians, and how many radians are in the whole, entire circle? 2 pi. Okay, so... Um, if I ask you a question about 360 degrees or about zero radians, this is where you're looking. All right. We'll get to what questions I'm going to ask in a minute. The next point we're going to label is that point on the positive y-axis. What would its coordinates be? Zero, one. We haven't moved to the left and right, and we went up one unit. Uh, now that is 90 degrees because if we start at the, the positive x-axis and we go up to the positive y-axis, that's a right angle, and 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over 2. You need to start on learning these. These are special angles, um, so you need to kind of start getting in your mind just that equivalency, that 90 degrees, pi over 2. It should be an automatic connection that you make there. Okay? On the negative x-axis, this point over here would be negative 1, 0. Because we've gone left one unit, we haven't gone up or down any. Now, this would be 180 degrees, because starting at the positive x-axis, we've made a straight line here, so it's 180 degrees, or pi radians. Okay, how about this point now on the negative y-axis? 0, negative 1. Okay, um, so we've gone 90 degrees, we've gone 180 degrees, now we're at 270. And that is equivalent to 3 pi over 2. Alright, so, well what about all those angles there inside? Now this is what the colored pencils are for. If you want to color code, I think it's kind of helpful. Because looking at this, hopefully you see there's a lot of symmetry going on, okay? Really, if we learn the first quadrants, then the second, third, and fourth are just, they're directly related to the first quadrant. Now, here's where this stuff's going to come from, and this is what um, I'm going to try and explain to you as best I can. All right, if we are trying to identify this first point that we come to from zero, the first one that we run into, if we're trying to identify the x and y coordinates of this, now you may not necessarily want to draw this on your circle because you want you want to be able to reference this and you don't want a bunch of lines everywhere. But I am going to draw it on mine <clears throat> so you can see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a line right here directly down to the x-axis. Well, if I do it directly down to the x-axis, I've created a right angle right here. Now, this is a 30 degree angle. It always is. This is just the way the unit circle is set up. That is a 30 degree angle. And if I know the radius of this circle is 1, I can use trig to figure out the adjacent, which would be my x coordinate, the distance that I've gone over from the origin. The x coordinate would be the adjacent side. The y coordinate would 
correspond to the opposite side. And if we do our trig here, our calculator is going to give us some not so nice numbers for some of these. But it turns out that the x value, the adjacent, has a length of the square root of 3 over 2. <coughs> Excuse me. And the y coordinate, the opposite, has a length of 1 half. Well, what kind of trig did I use? What, what trig ratio would I use to find the adjacent side over here? Cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 1. I would have done the cosine of 30, and that would have given me the square root of 3 over 2. Which trig function would I have used to find the opposite? Y'all can't forget this. Which one here is the opposite side? Sine of 30 gives us, if we type that into our calculator, it would give us 1 half. Okay? So, we can use this relationship. <clears throat> so that means that our points give us the cosine of the angle is the x, and the sine of the angle is the y. Because every single time a right triangle is created, the hypotenuse is 1, so the cosine of the angle gives us the adjacent, which is the x. The sine of the angle gives us the opposite, which is the y. So, <clears throat> the way that you use the unit circle is, if I say, well, what's the cosine of 30? If you type the cosine of 30 into your calculator, it's going to give you 0.866. And the answer choices aren't going to give you 0.866. They're going to have these square roots and they're going to have one half. This is where it comes from. It gives you the exact values of the trig ratios. Okay? So, I'm not going to fill in the rest of the first quadrant right now. Um, I'm going to label this in degrees and radians. Okay? This is 30 degrees. And pi over 6 radians. You need to know that those go together. 30 degrees and pi over 6 radians. I'm going to go over here into the second quadrant. And I'm going to find the corresponding point, the point that kind of matches this one, okay? It's the closest one to 180. It's the exact same point, except we've moved in the negative x direction. So it's negative square root 3 over 2 and positive 1 half, okay? If this was 30 degrees from 0, this one's 30 degrees from 180, so what angle is it? 150. We're 30 degrees short of 180, so it's 150, and it is 5 pi over 6. Now, here's how I remember the radians. Here's how I remember the radians. I know that 30 degrees is pi over 6. You just kind of have to memorize that one. Okay, I know that that's pi over 6. So, over here, I'm short of 1 pi. I have 1 6 short of 1 pi. 1 6 short of 1 is 5 6. Okay, so that's how I remember that 150 degrees without converting it to radians in my calculator. That's how I remember that it's 5 pi over 6. Okay, let's fill in the other two coordinates with these. Okay, so this point would be negative square root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. We've gone 100, or excuse me, we've gone 30 degrees past 180, so that's 210. We've gone 1 sixth past 1, so that puts us at 7 over 6, 7 pi over 6 in radians. And then in the fourth quadrant, <coughs> Exact same point, still square root 3 over 2, 1 half, but x is positive, y is negative. Don't look at this from the perspective of I've got to memorize all these positives and negatives and stuff. No, you don't. It, it follows the rules of geometry or the rules of the coordinate plane. If you're in this quadrant, you've got positive x's and negative y's. All we have to remember are those two values. Okay, um, and this would be, we're 30 degrees short of 360, so that's 330. We're 1 6 short of 2, so that's 11 pi over 6. 12 pi over 6 is 2 pi, so we're 1 short, 11 pi over 6. Okay, have a 
make sense? I know it's kind of a lot, but I'm trying to teach it from the perspective of patterns, okay? Lots and lots of patterns. Okay, the next point we're gonna look at is the one in the middle here. It is directly in the middle of this quadrant. So what angle are we talking about? If it's right in the middle of that quadrant, 45. We're halfway through the 90 degrees. So from the x-axis to that line is 45 degrees. So I like to label it out here at the point just so things don't get jumbled. 45 degrees is equivalent to pi over 4. And when you do the trig, you get the square root of 2 over 2 and the square root of 2 over 2. This one's the easy one to remember for me because it's exactly the same and it's all 2's. Okay? Um, if you're at 45 degrees, you're exactly halfway through the quadrant, doesn't it kind of make sense that my x and my y are equal? If I'm going halfway through the quadrant, they should be equal values. So 45, I think, is the easier one to remember. Okay? So let's label that in these other quadrants. So in the second quadrant, x is negative, y is positive. Exact same values, just got to remember the positive and the negative. We're 45 degrees short of 180, so that puts us at 135. We are 1 fourth short of 1, so that's 3 fourths. 3 pi over 4 and 3. Third quadrant, x and y are both negative. So negative square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. We are 45 degrees past 180, so we're at 225. We are 1 fourth past 1, so we are at 5 fourths, 5 pi over 4 there in the third quadrant. Fourth quadrant, we got positive x, negative y. So positive square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2. 315 degrees, because we're 45 degrees short of 360. We're one fourth short of 2, so that's 7 over 4. 7 pi. Okay? Now, sorry. Okay, so 30, 45, and 60 degrees are our, we call those our special angles. Okay? 30, 45, and 60 degrees, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3 are our special angles. That's, I mean, seriously, if you know the first quadrant, you should be able to figure out the other quadrants based on the way I've explained it. Now, a neat thing happens with 60 degrees. The coordinates for 60 degrees are the exact opposite of the 30 degrees. Because if you've got a right triangle and one of your angles is 30, what's the other angle? <coughs> Right triangle, one of the angles is 30, what's the other angle? 60. So, there are two angles in the same triangle, it just depends on which perspective you're looking at. So, where the adjacent was in the 30 degrees, for 30 degrees, 60 degrees is right up here. The adjacent and the one's the opposite, so that's why they flip places like that, okay? So that's how I remember this. 45 degrees, that's the easy one to remember. Square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2. They're the same. 30 and 60 are a combination of 1 half and the square root 3 over 2. Okay? Now, here's how I remember the order. Look at this visually. This point right here, with 30 degrees. 30 degrees is a more shallow angle. This point, we come over farther than we have to go up. The square root of 3 over 2 is 0.866. It's bigger than 1 half. Our x component is bigger than our y component for 30 degrees. So that's how I remember it's square root of 3 over 2.